Hello there and welcome to Norton Live Streams. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, for those that have uh, not uh, seen our live streams before, these are part of a series of live streams we're doing here at Norton. So if you've missed them in the past, you can catch up with our previous uh, sessions on our Norton EMEA website and on our Norton EMEA uh, YouTube site as well. So if you, if you want some more content after you've seen this, please look it up and uh, good stuff to find on there. Okay, so uh, before we start today's uh, session, I just want to introduce you to a little tool that we have on uh, this platform, Microsoft Teams. Uh, to, uh, it depends what, uh, what country you're watching from. Uh, and it's a little translation tool. It's called Closed Captions. So the instructions of how to put on these closed captions are on the screen right now for you to look at. A little uh, icon at the bottom of the screen. Click on that and choose the language you'd like uh, the subtitles to, uh, to be in. Okay, so... Uh, Let's get started. So today's session is about how to remove uh, welds on both carbon and on stainless steel. So we're going to be having a look at the best product for weld removal on both of these two very different types of, uh, of, uh, of material uh, today. Uh, but first of all, I want to introduce you firstly to myself and a colleague that's going to be presenting uh, alongside me uh, remotely today. Uh, my name is Paul Gray. I live in Cheshire in England. I'm an application engineer for MRO uh, in, in, the, in the whole of Europe. I've uh, quite a bit of experience in manufacturing, uh, as you can see there, and I've been with uh, Sangoban uh, Abrasives for 18 years now, so uh, should be up for my long service award soon. Uh, and I'm now going to introduce you to my friend uh, Tomasz, uh, who's over in, uh, in Poland today, joining us remotely. Hey Tomasz, how are you doing? Hi, 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 everyone. I'm I'm doing good. I hope you hear me very well. We can hear you perfectly, Tomac. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, just quickly introduce yourself, if you can, for me. I'm product manager of uh, of Tinwiz and on some coated products also dedicated for uh, right uh, angle grinders like fiber disc and also uh, flap disc. Uh, I'm in charge personally of developing countries uh, and uh, Eastern and Central Europe and also Kier, also Kierkant uh, distribution. I'm living in Poland, uh, 15 years in Sangobel, so less than Paul, unfortunately. <laughs> but I have also uh, more or less 25 years of experience in uh, industrial uh, business. Okay, thank you for that, Tom. So a wealth of knowledge on the on the call today, and thank you very much for for, for joining us. It's much appreciated. Uh, so um, the activity we're going to be to, to doing today, I say, we're going to be uh, talking about the products we're going to show you today. But then we're going to be testing the products live. Uh, and at the end of this live session, if you are watching live, please stick around at the end because we're going to have a question and answers uh, session. Uh, so you can ask me questions about what you're seeing today, the products you're seeing today, the applications you're seeing today, or about best practice. Pop your questions onto the chat uh, function on the side, uh, on the right-hand side of, uh, of your screen. Uh, Tomek will then uh, refer the questions to me at the end of the session, and we can go through them uh, uh, together. Me and Tomek can uh, discuss them uh, uh, with you and answer you the best, uh, the best we possibly can. So first of all, I think the best thing is to look at the products that we've got uh, and the machines and everything else we've got on the on the bench in front of us today. So you can see there's a whole host of different products that all can do a very good job uh, at uh, well removal, but specifically for certain kinds of applications or scenarios, they are uh, some are better than others, or we, we will show you the best product out of these uh, for a particular application. Uh, so we've got some grinding discs, some flat discs, some fiber discs that we can have a look at today. All are very good at uh, removing material uh, very, very quickly. We've got two different tools here as well in front of us on the, on the bench. We've got two angle grinders, so right angle grinder. This one here is a 1.7 kilowatt machine, so quite a high powered machine. Uh, so really high performance machine, which we'll use on the more, more high performance products. And then here we have a 1.1 uh, kilowatt machine, which is more probably a little bit more representative of what most people are using uh, in the market. It's a little bit uh, more cost effective to buy these and uh, not such a beast uh, to use. And of course, then we have our stainless steel and our carbon steel, which we'll be uh, 
removing the welds uh, welds from today. Uh, but before we get into uh, actual doing some physical physical grinding, we just want to give you a little intro into uh, weld removal and, and how we see it here at, uh, at Norton. So uh, just a very short uh, PowerPoint. We'll keep it as uh, as, as quick as possible because. Uh, we really want to get down to some action. Huh? Uh, so yeah, because we have only have 30 minutes here today, so it's, uh, we've got to get on with it pretty quick. So yeah, if you could put the uh, presentation up there, please. So, uh, so yeah, so what we're talking about weld removal, today we're going to focus on what we call grinding and stock removal. And we'll go into these two words because they are slightly different, what we mean by grinding and, uh, and stock removal uh, due to the different aggressivity required on, on these two things. So Tomek, do you want to take us through what we mean by heavy duty grinding? Yeah, exactly. But heavy duty grinding is uh, is a really really hard hard application. Uh, then uh, the most yeah. important thing is the speed. The speed because uh, the customers, the end users, would like to remove uh, the material as quickly as possible. And usually, in this kind of operation, is not important important the surface finish so in other words the end user doesn't care about surface finish the the work have to be done as quickly as possible as I, as I said the main application is carbon steel stainless steel and sometimes cast iron and uh, what are the expectations of end user first of all aggressiveness which have big impact for the speed of the uh, work this is the first thing and uh, the most important thing uh, based on our experience i think comfort is the second uh, parameter that uh, is one of the ex the most important expectations it certainly is for me tomek I, I agree with that the comforts are really important important factor if 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 there's lack of comfort in an operation, it means I don't want to use the, the, the grinding tool at the end of the day. So yeah, it's a really important one, comfort, yeah. Yeah, by the meaning of comfort, we, we understand also the vibration and lack yeah. of vibration, because exactly. vibration can destroy comfort at all. So uh, every end user would like to have the, the products which completely do not have any vibration. For sure, the vibration can come from uh, anger grinder, for example, bad condition of, of bearing, etc. But uh, lack of vibration have big impact for the, the comfort at all. Product life is also another parameter that we have to consider because the product life, uh, no one would like to change the, the tool uh, very often. So this is also the, 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 the obvious, um, uh, I think, Precision? I, I think on, on that as well, Tomek, product, low, low product life means the disc is wearing very quickly, which means it will produce a lot of dust in the application as well, which again comes back to oper operator comfort. If there's a lot of dust uh, being produced from the disc wearing quickly, it's not so nice for the operator be, to, be, uh, to be working in that environment. Sorry to interrupt you there, Tomek. You can in interrupt uh, <laughs> every time. Oh, thank uh, you. It's really welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very also we have to say that this is very also to, to combine aggressiveness and uh, speed of work with product, uh, high product life. Yeah, because in general, if we use a, a conventional grinding uh, disc uh, with aluminum oxide, if we would like to have high speed, the wheels uh, usually are, are, are softer, so the life is shorter. So if we increase the hardness of the wheels, then we will have higher product life. But in opposite way, we'll, the aggressiveness will be lower. But today we will show you also the the the, uh, the products which are able yeah, to we'll, we'll combine see this those, in demo. those yeah. two parameters on the same uh, products. Precision. This is also a very important thing, but by precision we mean product feel and control of this process. This is not the typical precision of, of, of shapes uh, uh, after the grindings. And no smell, this is also very welcome. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, do, we do see a lot of products in the market that do smell quite bad when they're, when they're breaking down. So that's again down to operator comfort, yeah. Thank you, Tomek. Okay, so, so this is, a, that was, uh, you know, heavy duty grinding, which is, uh, which is completely, uh, 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 it's a really difficult application, very extreme application, and uh, all them factors are very important. But where we're talking about stop removal, this is where we move away from conventional grinding discs and we start using uh, coated abrasive products such as flap and fiber discs so it is still removing a lot of material but um, it's where we're, we're more focusing more on, on a uh, on a surface finish 
So we don't want the grind lines that a conventional, you know, hard grinding disc is going to leave on the surface of the material. We actually want a, a better, a better finish. So therefore, we employ a flap or a, a fibre disc uh, to 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 do the job. It doesn't remove quite as much material as a conventional grinder. Also, lifetime can be a little bit less of that, but it's it does leave a better finish and it's much more comfortable to use. So you get a lot less vibration with these products because they're softer at the end of the day. Made with made with a coated abrasive, there's a bit of flex in them. You don't get as much feedback from from the grinding surface as you do with a conventional hard. Uh, hard grinding disc but uh, so the customer still wants to remove as much material as they can but they are are con actually concerned about the finish because maybe this part of the fabrication making will be seen okay so they are focusing on uh, on finish a bit more if you see on the top right and we'll show that in the demonstration today you can see uh, in that photo the grinding disc finish with a p36 in there it's pretty coarse pretty rough the same uh, grit size on a fiber or flat disc on the right hand side same grit same p36 but totally different surface aspects not no grooves or damage done in there just a much um, nicer homogeneous finish so products we're going to be showing you today are listed on the screen here we're not necessarily going to go through in the in this uh, this actual order but around about that we've got our, our special uh, quantum 3 grinding disc with our unique quantum grain in there we then have our Norton Vulcan disc, aluminium oxide uh, grinding disc, as Tomek was referring to earlier, very common in the market. We have our quantum ceramic uh, flat disc. We then have our extreme uh, flat disc too, which is a zirconia, a uh, very standard product in the market. And uh, we have two different fiber discs at the end there with the F970X uh, Blaze and our quantum fiber. So PowerPoint is over, not too long, eh? Anything to add, Tomek? Let's start the practice, yeah? <laughs> oh, you want me to do some work? No problem at all. I'm happy to do that as well. Um, yeah, so, so uh, quite a few products to go through today. Uh, so we best get on with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use each product in its typical environment. And we'll just talk about the features and benefits and, uh, and what we see in the application. I'm going to be grinding this bit of steel here. If we can zoom in on that, please, Martin. So it's a, a piece of carbon steel with some uh, uh, stick welds on here. So you can see it's quite a thick uh, 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 stick weld that you've got on there, an arc weld, and quite a bit of slag on the top, etc. Lots of spatter around, so quite dirty welds and quite a reasonable size. What we're going to do is we're going to use each one of the products we've got in front of us today and time uh, how long it takes us to remove uh, half of one of these welds. You see I've drawn a line across the middle. So we've got six products to go through and we've got uh, six lines that we can do so six uh, six half of these uh, of these three lines so that's what we're going to test on i've got my little timer here uh, so when we put the product on as soon as i start i'll press go and we'll, we'll record uh, the time it takes for each one of those to to grind away okay i'm just going to get this in in the vise and make sure that's clamped properly uh, by the way, I'm wearing all the relevant safety gear for today. I've got flame proof uh, overalls on or fire retardant overalls, should I say. Um, I have my uh, heat proof gloves that I'm wearing. Uh, I have uh, ear uh, defenders in already. Um, I have uh, safety shoes on, which is very important. And I'm also today going to be wearing this uh, face shield. OK, it's difficult to wear safety glasses today because they'll steam up because it's going to get very hot in here. But this is more uh, better than, uh, than, than glasses, to be honest. So it's going to totally protect my face from any debris that's going to be ejected. So we might as well start with, uh, with product one today. We'll start today with our Vulcan uh, grinding uh, wheel here, a grinding disc. Tomek, would you like to tell us a little bit about the Vulcan uh, grinding disc and what uh, you know, features and benefits of this product? Yeah, uh, this is typical aluminum oxide uh, grain, our best seller. Uh, probably uh, the most uh, industrial area uh, you can find uh, this kind of uh, products. Uh, Feature benefits. First of all, this is uh, a very good relation between the price of products and uh, also some uh, performance that we can uh, uh, get. So, uh, as Paul said, aluminum oxide hardness as uh, standard, let's say, uh, not so hard, not so uh, soft, uh, should represent a relatively good life and also relatively good material removal rate. Yeah. And, and I think um, it's safe to say these kind of products, when, when people are, are using uh, aluminium oxide uh, grinding disc, it's generally uh, the case that they don't have a high power machine such as this 1.7 kilowatt machine here uh, using this disc. It will, of course, work on this, this machine, the high power machine. 
uh, but it obviously it will wear it away a little bit quicker. Again, more for high performance product. Well, where we see people using products like this are, are the lower uh, power or the mid range tools, such as this 1.1 1 .1, uh, kilowatt grinder. So that's what we're going to use and keep true to what we see in the, in the marketplace. I'm just going to mount this disc onto the uh, onto the machine, making sure as I'm using grinding disc, I make sure I reverse my flange as well. So we mount that uh, correctly. Any questions on reversing the flange, we can cover in the chat later. If you want to uh, put something on the comments there, we can go into that in a bit more detail. OK, we've got the disc attached. Um, I have the machine is not powered when I'm changing the disc. I'm now going to switch it, uh, switch it on, which I normally forget to do. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off this weld here and uh, uh, we'll go time how long it takes me to do that with this aluminium oxide uh, uh, disc. Let's check it so everything's working correctly. We're on. OK, so off we go. Yeah, uh, in this operation, you can see also the, the, the angle between the material and also uh, our uh, grinding disc. Uh, the optimal angle is uh, more or less 40-45%. Uh, uh, we can say that the optimum is maybe 30, between 30 and 45 uh, degrees. Why is so important? This angle is very important because uh, if you grind with lower um, uh, lower angle, then the the touching area is much higher and the fatigue of, of operator is much much uh, uh, higher also. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that, Tomek. Yeah, you're talking about the angle of grinding. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, really important that you don't want to be too flat. Otherwise, you, you, it's too much of a contact area for the disc. You can use it like that, but it's not the optimal uh, optimal way. Martin, my colleague, is just going to get me a pen because I forgot to uh, get one before uh, before the live stream started, I'm afraid. So I'm just going to put AO as an aluminium oxide and 31. So that's 31 seconds that it took us to remove uh, that weld with the standard aluminium oxide. OK, so next product I'm going to introduce to you is going to be the uh, our Quantum uh, 3 grinding disc, if we can just get a zoom in. Perfect. Thank you, Martin. I'm referring to Martin, by the way. Martin is the guy uh, behind the scenes on charge of all the cameras and the sound and the, the broadcast today. So uh, when you, I'm referring to Martin, I'm talking to my colleague here, not my imaginary friend. OK, so as you can see here, 125, 7 millimeter. Tomek, what's Quantum 3? Yeah, this is the best solution that we currently have in our portfolio. Uh, first of all, this is ceramic grain. The ceramic grain give us a really, really high benefit because the ceramic grain is mi micro fracturing, constantly sh self sharpening during the grinding process, exposing a new sharp edges uh, permanently. So this grain uh, can generate much more uh, sharp edges can uh, work much longer and that's why the wheel uh, with ceramic grain can be from one side very aggressive with the work can be done very quickly but the life and uh, wears out of, of, of wheels is really really low so can work very 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 long this is something opposite to aluminium oxide grain uh, because uh, if you would like to have long life, then uh, the wheel cannot be aggressive. Yeah, um, we need, and we need a powerful machine to get the optimal from from this. Again, as as Tomek says, we want to break down the grain on this. We want to break down that ceramic grain. If we don't have a powerful machine, we're not able to do that. So it's easy easier to dull your your disc or glaze the disc. So on a on a one point seven kilowatt machine such as we have here. It's absolutely perfect. So a high performance ceramic, lots of sharp cutting edges on a really powerful tool that get the job done. Well, we'll see how much quicker. All right, so let's get ready to go again. Ooh. So coming back to the to the angle, which is very important, especially in ceramic grain, because uh, by uh, by lower contact area between material and the wheel, we can uh, generate higher force for every single grain, which is very important to 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 to, to proper work of such grain. OK, all right, Q3 for that. And that was 16 seconds, so twice as fast. And to be honest, you, you can actually see. Uh, well, we'll have a look at the finish later on, how it looks compared to the uh, 
aluminium oxide but you can see it's really really cut into the uh cut into the well very very uh very deeply i just want to show one thing to you as well uh ladies and gentlemen if you could just zoom in on the these these discs here on the table martin uh if we can get an overhead of that um hold on a minute i can move these to the vice to make it easier you can see on uh on the right hand side here we have the quantum and on the left hand side here we have aluminium oxide just look at the wear we did the same amount of work uh took twice as fast with uh, our quant uh, so our quantum product here but look at the what difference in the wear we've taken the edge off the ao disc much more than we have on our high performance ceramic quantum 3 so you can get an idea of uh, the difference in the lifetime of these products from just that short uh, short amount of grinding yeah based on my experience uh, the, the the ceramic gra uh, disc can be up to four times uh, faster but everything depends on uh, power of machine kind of material hardness of materials operator operator and, uh, yeah. yeah this is also very important very. Uh, parameter <laughs> Yeah, really important parameter. This is the, and the biggest unknown in any any abrasive application is uh, is the operator. So, uh, yeah, really, yeah, really important factor. Um, right. Okay. So let's move on now to uh, what we were referring. This is the heavy duty grinding products, as we spoke earlier. But now we're going to move on to uh, uh, some different products that we, we call more stock removal products. So these are the uh, fiber uh, discs and the flap discs. So first of all, we're going to introduce you to our Norton Extreme uh, flat disc that I have in front of us here. Okay, this is uh, pure zirconia. You can tell that because it's uh, blue color, which is pretty much an industry standard for, uh, for a zirconia products. If you see a blue flat disc, that's generally the abrasive material we've got on there. And this is our new Norton Extreme. It's a really uh, good performing, long life uh, zirconia flat disc. So we'll get that on the machine and uh, We'll see how quickly we can take off that same weld with this product. Much more comfortable to use than a, a grinding disc, but it will be a little bit uh, a bit slower, especially versus the uh, quantum product. Okay, so I'm going to do this uh, small weld here with the quantum, turn the power on the machine and see how fast we are and what kind of surface finish we, uh, we generate from that too. Oh, hold on. So coming back to, to, to the angle between the material and abrasive uh, tool, you see that the angle is much, much lower. So the optimum angle is between 15 to 25 uh, degrees if we are using conical shape of, um, uh, of flat disc. Okay. So again, really, really nice to use. You can almost hear uh, the difference in the in the the, the sound uh, when you're using that. So I'm going to put uh, 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 Zerk, and that was uh, 26 seconds. Almost my marks are coming off here. Bear with me one second. It's a bit hot when I write on this uh, on this steel plate. So you can see. You know, it's done a reasonable job. If we go back to that overhead shot you had there, Martin, that's perfect for us. You can see here we have the um, the finish from, I'll get a better angle of that. Here we have the finish from our AO disc, uh, the grinding disc for heavy stock removal. Here we have the ceramic uh, quantum three. And here we have our zirconia flap disc. You can see a massive difference in the finish there. Look at the scratch of, uh, of the quantum three uh, versus, the, uh, versus the zirconia flap disc, totally different. So again, much quicker, but much better surface finish on the flat on the flat disc. Okay, let's get this back in the vise, and I'm going to test a few other products on here now. If I can get it in the vise properly, bear with me a second. Okay, that's got him in. So I'll just turn the power off while I mount the next product, which is going to be our uh, ceramic uh, flat disc, which I'm going to put in front of you on the vise there while I change the tool. So this is our Norton Quantum uh, ceramic, 100% ceramic grain uh, on this product. And again, it's best used with a high power machine uh, with this one, because it, um, especially with coated abrasive, because you know, when we have uh, uh, mono layer products such as this, where the coated grains are applied to the surface, we really need to make the most of the abrasive grain on there. And with a low power machine, you, uh, you have the possibility of glazing this disc. And you can tell when it's glazed by it being shiny on the surface. So to make sure you break down the flaps and get to the flap underneath, we need uh, a decent uh, power machine 
otherwise uh, otherwise it will glaze very uh, very prematurely and you won't get the best from from the product uh, this is a p40 uh, grit so a little bit finer than the grinding disc we have earlier but again 125 and um, we'll get that on the machine and we'll time time this away yeah, in general, we can say that all ceramic products uh, needs the energy, needs the power. So this yeah. is a very, very common um, uh, need yeah? uh, that we have to have. It is. You're right, Tomek. Without without the power, it, it you're, you're you're wasting your money at the end of the day. You might as well use a uh, if you've got a lower power machine. The Norton Extreme Zirconia is absolutely ideal for you, rather than the full ceramic. Okay, so I'm going to take off the weld on this side, and we'll see uh, we see how quick we can get through that now. Yeah, for sure. This uh, this product will be much more uh, aggressive than our Zirconia uh, version. Uh, coming back to, to the shapes, uh, we can have two shapes, the conical shape, this is the wheel that uh, is using by Paul now, but we have also some flap shapes of uh, flap disc, which can be used for um, uh, flat surfaces. Oh, that's hot. So ceramic and the time was uh, 20 seconds. Okay, so much faster than the zirconia and again uh, slightly more aggressive finish but we'll have a look at that in a, in a minute but uh, very quick very comfortable to to use uh, no so much vibration and uh, done quite a quite a quick job uh, there to be honest with you right we'll get that uh, over there and the next products we want to show you are our uh, fiber discs we'll start first of all with our uh, uh, blaze F, uh, F970, if we can just go into the mic, uh, the close up there, here you can see the fiber disc. This is a, uh, uh, again, 100% ceramic disc. You can see all the details on the back that it's a blaze disc, the cap code F970. The new product from, from, from us guys. It's, uh, it's a really nice grain for, for carbon steel, specifically because this is not supersized. And I will get onto the supersized nature of, of a product uh, later when we switch on to stainless, stainless steel, so you'll understand what I mean by, by supersized. Okay, so it has no cooling aid on there. That's the that's the the main difference between that and the next product we'll be uh, we'll be showing you. Okay, so I need the backup pad. Okay, this is a a fiber disc backing pad, and because I want to be aggressive with the application here, I'm using what they call a hard and ribbed backup pad. You can see this one's really uh, tough, and lots of little uh, ribs on there as well, as you can see on the camera close up now. That's going to be that's going to help me with uh, with the aggression of a fiber disc because. It gives me a smaller footprint on, on the material, uh, therefore concentrating the, the, uh, the pressure in a smaller area, giving me uh, you know, more pressure per, per, per uh, square inch or centimeter of the, uh, of the surface. So let's get the... Oh, go on, Tomek. For ceramic uh, fiber disc, uh, we, can, uh, we are also recommending to use hard uh, pads uh, because yeah. in the pads we can, we can find also some, some softer version but but for for ceramic uh, the the hard version is the is the best option yeah you're exactly right i mean it's the same as having the cars on your the tires on your car if they're underinflated if they're not pumped up properly even whatever engine you've got you can't use it you know because it slides everywhere so you have to have the right uh, right equipment to do and it's you, you, your application is only as good as the the weakest link so always Remember to have the correct uh, backup pad. If you want to respect the surface even more and be more gentle with the surface, you go softer with the backup pad. It's as simple as that. Finer on the disc and softer, but today we want to be as, uh, as aggressive as we possibly can. Right, the disc mounted on. I'm just going to switch on the, uh, on the tool. Okay, and uh, off we go. I expect this should be pretty damn quick, so uh, we'll, we shall see. Yes. Yeah. The fiber disc uh, can work much, much quicker with, with higher aggressiveness. But if we compare versus the flat disc, the flat disc can give us much longer life. This is the main benefit of flat disc, but fiber can work much, much quicker. It is 14 seconds. Yeah, so by far the quickest product out of all of them here today. And you may think, well, that's what I'm going to use. And if that's going to get quicker than anything else. But uh, if you come back and have a look on the close up camera from above, you can see on this product, we have somewhere on the edge. I mean, this still still go for uh, many, many more minutes, uh, but it's it's worn a little bit on the edge. 
So you can imagine, yeah, it's really, really quick. It's much faster than any, any of the other products that we've got here to, to show today. But uh, it, it, you will probably have to change out your tool much more often than when you're using a conventional uh, grinding disc or, or a flat disc. So it all depends what you want to do as an operator. If you want to get the job done as quick as possible and comfortable, the fiber disc is 100% the way to go. But if you want the product to get it, uh, you know, the rail to be removed very quickly, but the product to last a long time, then you'd be looking at the grinding disc. So it's, it's, it just depends what the operator or the application, uh, application needs. Okay, so 14 seconds so far. So that is really, really very quick. Um, so the next product that I want to show you is our F996 product. Okay, so uh, here you see uh, this product. See, it's a nice red color. Um, all the details on the back. It's again got our quantum, uh, quantum grain in here. So the same grain as we have in the grinding disc we were showing you earlier is inside uh, this product too. Um, main difference between this and the uh, F970 we had on earlier is something I was referring to, which was the super size. All right. Now that's what we call a grinding aid. This product has not got super size on there. And there's one way to tell it's really easy. This non super size product is shiny. You can see the, the phenolic resins in the background here, and it's kind of shiny and glossy. But when a product has an extra layer on top, which is the super size, you can see it's a matte or a dull finish. So when you see a product out in the market and if it has a dull finish like this, you know it has a supersized uh, grinding aid on there. Now on, um, on carbon steel, that doesn't really provide us much advantage. Maybe uh, a little bit of speed maybe, but it's not a great deal uh, of an advantage for us. But when we come to stainless steel, it's a huge advantage because stainless steel does heat up uh, very quickly when compared to uh, carbon steel. Uh, it doesn't dissipate the heat as well and we can end up with burning and bluing on the stainless which we'll show you in a minute once we've finished testing on the carbon so we've got the product on there let's turn the power on on the machine again and we'll do the same application as we've done before the last weld with uh, this full ceramic super sized uh, super sized product Yeah, yeah, look at the angle uh, between the material and also uh, abrasive stuff. It's more or less 15 degrees. Uh, it's quite similar to our flap disc. Uh, uh, yeah, the wheel is, 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 is also quick. Yeah. 12 seconds. I mean, to be honest with you, a very similar performance to the uh, unsupersized uh, F970 Blaze. Uh, it's, uh, it's gone really quickly to get that material away. So again, it depends what you want to do, but obviously for carbon steel, this would be my product of choice without a doubt, because it doesn't matter about the burning uh, and it's going to be a generally a more cost effective product than, than the super size product below, which has an extra layer of, uh, of performance on there. Therefore, you know, a little bit more expensive, but it doesn't really give us a great benefit on carbon steel where this super size layer does give us a great benefit is on, uh, on stainless steel, which we'll we'll come to. So we'll summarize that at the end of the end of the live demo, but I want to get onto the stainless steel component first of all, which we have here. Okay. Let's wind the vice in a bit. So when I said earlier about the differences of uh, carbon and stainless steel, the main thing is 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 stainless steel uh, we want to be a bit kinder to. Generally stainless steel is is thinner because uh, it's a stronger material than carbon steel. So Generally, the gauge is thinner, so we need to be a little bit more careful with the product we use on here. Also, the surface finish is going to be more important because generally stainless steel is left bare. It's not painted or galvanized or coated with, uh, with a protective layer because it doesn't need it. So, yeah, we could take the weld from here with a grit uh, 36 fiber, uh, such as this product here, or the grinding disc or a flap disc, no problem at all. But we really want to be thinking about uh, being a bit more gentle with, uh, with the surface and uh, thinking about what we may do later in refining the surface. So I would suggest for stainless steel, we look at a finer, finer grit rather than a, a P36. Would you agree with that, Tomek? I thought you would. Uh, we know uh, how important uh, is to have uh, silver uh, um, uh, color on stainless steel. We don't want to have a blue ink and uh, that's why uh, as you said, we have to be much more gentle uh, yeah. if we're grinding the stainless steel, yeah? 
Yeah, we do, mate. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick grind with um, a ceramic flat disc in P40. Uh, so the, in the quantum grain on, on the right hand side here and on the left hand side here, I'm going to do another grind with a P120. Yes, it's going to take me a lot longer to take the world off with a P120, but the finish that it leaves behind will be much, much better. So let's just have a look at that. I'm not going to time this. There's no need to, but uh, we'll just see how it works. When I switched the machine on, I knew I'd do it at one point in the demo. It happens every time. Okay, so you can see that was extremely fast. That's taken the weld off really, really quickly. But it has uh, left quite a deep scratch in here, as you can see. So I don't know, it was probably about six seconds or something. Really, really quick. Uh, remember the welds on uh, on stainless steel as well are much smaller these are not mig welds or, or uh, you know arc welds or anything like that oxyacetylene welding it's totally different this is tungsten inert gas or TIG welding the welds are much smaller than we see on uh, on carbon steels so therefore you know it all leads to the need and requirement or the the, the best practice to use a finer finer grade disc so now I'm putting on the Quantum Ceramic P120 and I'm going to grind off this other weld. Should be pretty quick to do and you will have a look at the difference of the, of the surface. All right, let me turn the machine on again. Let's not forget that. And if we can see that this process is, is a little bit uh, slower. Well, this is mainly due to the... Uh, in, uh, grid size that we currently have and also the surface finish is is is, is much much better than we can observe uh, yeah on previous so as you, applications as you can see, yeah. oh sorry tomek sorry to yeah, yeah go 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 so as you see there we've got our uh, p36 finish on this side you can see the what we call the fish scaling on here a lot of like fish bones that are on there very very obvious but on the on the p120 side there's a couple of little holes here which re really should be filled by weld obviously not a, not a great job in the fabrication department there but you can see the scratch is much more refined okay and there's less chance of damage when you if we were to finish that with finer grades you would see lots of different damage on the surface there but you can see now it's uh you know with the p120 it's pretty damn smooth and it will take me a lot less steps to finish having chosen that right grit size uh, uh for the well removal uh, application okay so um to summarize i keep my eye on the time we've nearly been on for for 40 uh, 40 minutes now so for stainless steel we're better using a finer grade product uh doesn't really matter on the on the machine tool power when we're doing the metal weld removal stage because you're really trying to be as careful as you as you possibly can with the finish but for carbon steel if we can go on the overhead shot here martin uh maybe on the table might be better Chasing you he's chasing me around a little bit i keep changing my mind where i'm going to show that I'm making his life uh, life tough on a friday i do apologize martin so we have um, here our aluminium oxide uh, product it took us uh, 31 seconds to remove uh, that weld which is uh, it's it's good enough on a lower power machine of course then we have our quantum three that we used 16 seconds but you can see a much coarser finish on the surface there it's much more uh, aggressive uh, we then used our zirconia flat disc it took us 26 seconds but now the surface is looking a lot nicer a lot less uh, damage in the surface there you know it's pretty quick very similar you know sort of time and performance to the vulcan uh, ao disc but again you're probably going to get better lifetime from this product than from uh, this product so lifetime and comfort i i would say uh, i would see again it depends what you're you're looking for um, then we had our quantum uh, ceramic on the top here. That does say uh, 20 seconds on there. It's a little bit faint to, to say. So again, that was pretty damn quick, to be honest. Uh, it gives us a, a reasonable finish, a little bit uh, uh, less coarse than the quantum grinding disc, but it's done a very nice job, uh, very flat. We then had our F970 fiber discs that we did. Probably the quick, uh, nearly the quickest of them all. Uh, again, the finish is very nice uh, on there, but uh, it depends on the lifetime. It's probably not going to, well, it will not last as long as any of these other products, but it does it much quicker than any of these products. So again, it depends what you're looking for. Is it speed 
Is it lifetime? Is it comfort? And last of all, we have our quantum uh, disc. That was the fastest of it all, to be honest with you, which was uh, which was uh, 12 seconds to do that. So uh, again, nice choice of a product, but so similar in performance to the uh, F970 uh, that we did at 14 seconds. You know, for the cost value, I would probably pick the F970 if I'm after speed. So easy to see. It all depends what you need as an operator or what your customer needs to do. Is it uh, speed? Is it lifetime? Is it comfort? These are all important factors to any application. And you can see here, we've got it covered with, uh, with the range of products, carbon steel and stainless steel, whichever you need to remove, uh, remove the welds from. Okay, uh, Tomac, have you got anything to add to that, my friend? Uh, what can I say? Well I done, John. Well, uh, you are a oh, that's a, perfect uh, as, as always. That's a perfect thing to say. I love it. Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, that brings us to the end of the show. We we're uh, 40 minutes in, which is where we try to keep it to. Uh, for those of you watching live, just stay on the end if, if you can. But for those that are watching this on the YouTube recorded channel, uh, please join us next time on uh, Lawton Norton live streams. So we're having a little bit of a summer break. We'll be back in uh, September. So uh, enjoy your holidays. We'll see you next time.